Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Showtime Boxing beats HBO Boxing when they are dueling and have dual telecasts. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, you guys seen the title. I'm sure a lot of you guys, diehard boxing fans, have already heard about it, but Showtime their pre presentation of Leo Santa Cruz Carl Frampton part 2 it it outdid the HBO telecast which was on the same night in the same time slot and that was the main event with Francisco Vargas who actually ended up losing to Bear Chelt and this is I would say more abnormal and I told you guys man like I, I told you the, the biggest thing is I told you guys a while ago that this would not be a good year for you because tell the truth tell the truth you have to tell the truth right and some of you simply don't do that there's a lot of tribalism there's a lot of people who maybe are paid under the table in this boxing media i don't know what the situation is but all i do know is some of them don't tell the truth and as a result it leaves you in in between a rock and a hard place because when everything you said would or should happen doesn't happen, then you lose credibility. So with the boxing ego brand, we're not always right, but I pride myself in being honest and forthcoming with what I truly see. Like if I break down a fight, it's not against fighter A or fighter B. It's because I really believe that person will win. It's not because I'm friends with them or this and that. Because if it's all that, then I probably just wouldn't do a prediction if it was going to be some type of conflict of interest, right? Where I'm just like buddy-buddy and I'm on their team or something. So the Showtime thing is, is pretty big because they usually are trailing by HBO. Because HBO, you got to look at it, they're in more homes. They, they have more subscribers totally than, than uh, Showtime does. So... For them to lose by 100k, 100,000 views, that's that's pretty significant to me, right? And again, tell the truth. One year ago, I put HBO Boxing Killing Showtime Boxing Quarter 1, Quarter 2, 2015. But oh, what a difference a year makes, right? So I have no problem if HBO is on top, I'll tell you that like I did a year ago. But you look at the more recent videos, five months ago, Showtime Boxing, PBC crushing HBO Boxing, free and premium fights, no pay-per-view. And I did a 23 minute video and dissertation about this war of HBO and boxing and Showtime Boxing. Premier Boxing Champs, Showtime killing HBO 2017. Two weeks ago, I dropped this video. Showtime drops the bomb on HBO fans boxing releases massive boxing schedule 10 months ago so as you guys can see i'm on top of things and i'm well informed pause and it's just facts are facts like i said when hbo had a better quarter one and quarter two i told you that when showtime is clearly leading the pack i'm going to tell you that too i actually was at the fight as media for leo santa cruz carl frampton and i enjoyed myself i thought mikey garcia kind of stole the show with his knockout performance that was his return first fight at lightweight and he looked spectacular and he he beat a champion the most emphatic way you can a guy who never been stopped who was a puncher and he made him look like an amateur and he didn't make him look like the champion because he, he really was never able to get into a rhythm or get off and then you punctuate it by knocking him out cold and probably a fight of the year or knockout of the year contender right and then leo santa cruz carl frampton is basically round 13 they picked up where they left off in the first fight um there's a bit different strategy from leo santa cruz where he actually showed that he can box he doesn't have to just keep coming forward which surprised me i thought he was more one-dimensional like i thought he just doesn't know how to use his height but it showed in this fight at least um against carl frampton he knows how to use his height more and lay off some of the punches but still keep the the volume higher than most so it was a good win and now it sets up a trilogy but showtime's doing their thing this telecast beat the hbo telecast which was a war and i told you part of that reason is because hbo for the last year 2016 bleeding over into 2017 they are killing the consumer with pay-per-views in fact 
you look at it, the fights that they're that fans are probably most excited for on the HBO side of things, 90% of them are going to say this, HBO pay-per-view across the top. Most people don't even think Kodo Kirkland is pay-per-view worthy. It's going to be an entertaining fight. I definitely believe that. I could see somebody getting knocked down or knocked out, knocked out or hurt. But even with Rigandau on the card against his mandatory, is it pay-per-view? You got to look at the main event. They've both been on a long layoff. And in their last bout, they lost to the same guy, which is Canelo Alvarez. Obviously, Kirkland lost in a worse fashion because he got knocked out versus Koto with the distance. But pay, this is pay-per-view. Now, this is another similar. Me, personally, I'm a boxing fan, so I don't really care what network. It could be on Cartoon Network for all I care. Good boxing is good boxing. But I, I'm realistic. I really want to see David Lemieux, Curtis Stevens, because I think a knockout will ensue. And this is on regular HBO. But in the grand scheme of it, you got to look at it. Th what does this fight mean for the division? Both of these guys have stepped in versus the guy who's considered to be the best, Gennady Golovkin, and they both got stopped in the same round, in the same location, Madison Square Garden. Just a little fun fact. They got stopped. Uh, both both of them, I think, got stopped in the ninth round. Maybe it was the eighth, but it was both at Madison Square Garden. So in terms of meaningful, this is not necessarily the most meaningful fight, just like Kodo Kirkland. It's a good fight, like in terms of entertainment value. I think it will deliver that, but... I mean, the most meaningful middleweight fight is happening, but it's going to be on HBO pay-per-view. And that's Golovkin versus Danny Jacobs, which is a good fight. But again, it's HBO pay-per-view. So the, the reason I keep saying pay-per-view versus regular subscription is because if you have a regular subscription, you still have to come out of pocket more to see Koto Kirkland, Golovkin Jacobs. Like, so the monthly subscription, I need HBO to, to show the boxing fans that they're still in this. Here's another fight. Canelo Alvarez versus Chavez Jr., right? HBO pay-per-view. So it's just like, realistically, regular HBO, we had um, Miguel Roman, that fight, I mean, the Burchelt versus Francisco Vargas. And now we have David Lemieux, Curtis Stevens. That's on their regular programming. Everything else is on HBO pay-per-view versus you look at the Showtime side of things and... On their regular network, they had Leo Santa Cruz, Carl Frampton 2, Bud Du Jack versus James DeGale, with Tank Davis upsetting the champion and taking his belt also in emphatic fashion by knocking him out, Mikey Garcia. Then you have Adrian Broner versus Adrian Granados. On that card, you have Lamont Peterson versus Keith Thurman's mandatory, David Avenesian. And then you also have Lucas Brown versus... Thomas Top Dog Williams. So just like I said earlier, some some fights you could say aren't the most meaningful for the division, but you're also getting meaningful fights for the division, like Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, right? So I, I would be okay if someone says Lucas Brown versus Thomas Top Dog Williams. That doesn't define the the number one light heavyweight. You know what I mean? Obviously, it's like Ward Kovalev, Better Biev, and Adonis Stevenson. So it doesn't doesn't necessarily do that. But it still should be an explosive fight. So I'm okay with fights that aren't going to be the number one and number two guys because you have to be realistic. Uh, that's not, you're not always going to get the number one and two guys. But the problem herein lies when HBO, everything's pay-per-view, and then the ones that they are getting on regular doesn't establish any they're not the most meaningful like even francisco vargas yes he was a champion and now we got a new face berchel but most people think that lomachenko is the number one person in the division so i would like to see on regular hbo maybe like a lomachenko salido rematch lomachenko versus francisco vargas but not now because he just got uh, stopped but maybe berchelt right those are all meaningful fights because lomachenko is the dance partner who's considered the best in the division so i'd like to see some of those sprinkled in with some of these fights that don't really mean much and what i mean is that miguel Cotto, james kirkland whoever wins this let's say Cotto wins is he the best at 154 above demetrius andre jamal and jamel charlo if i don't know if jamal is moving up but edislandi lada can can Cotto beat edislandi lada can he beat demetrius andre because he beats kirkland it doesn't really show us that right so i think showtime is just they have a better lineup. Broner, Granados, stylistically should be a fun fight. You could say, oh, it's not Terrence Crawford and Broner, but, I mean, you can't really knock this fight. Broner and Granados both been on a long layoff. 
Granados has extremely long arms, longer than Floyd Mayweather, and he has the style that has given Broner a ton of problems. Plus, it's a loaded card. You got Lamont Peterson moving up to welterweight versus David Avenition. And then, like I said, you have a light heavyweight bout. So they should all be good fights. Regular showtime. And then, obviously, this card that we all want to see, Thurman Garcia. And I got to include PBC because PBC is, is, is still in competition with HBO, right? So aside from the showtime, you got fights like this. Luis Calazo versus Sammy Vasquez. See how he bounces back after his first loss. You got Robert Easter versus Luis Cruz. And then Rasheed Warren in a title fight, right? So the thing that I like about PBC and Showtime, what they're doing is they're giving you everything. A lot of people want to nitpick premier boxing champs like, oh, Keith Thurman versus Luis Calazo. What does that mean? But not everything is gonna is gonna be, like I said, the number one and number two guys. That's just a fact, right? But who has a problem with Keith Thurman now? He fought Colazzo, then immediately after fought Sean Porter, and now he's fighting Danny Garcia. You can't really say anything like about Keith Thurman at the moment, right? What are you going to say? Oh, he fought a once-beaten guy, now he's fighting the undefeated champion. Stupid Keith. You know what I mean? So Showtime, they're just they're getting it done because they're giving us everything in between. You also have, oh, here's another card. This is And, and see, this is the other thing. And again, the reason I'm bringing up PBC is because they're all kind of affiliates and they're all going after HBO. Like they're all like Showtime and PBC fighters work together, right? But here's another one. You got Deontay Wilder versus Gerald Washington, a six foot six heavyweight who's undefeated. Two undefeated fighters, last minute replacement to Waworski or whatever his name is. Then you have Jared Swift heard Tony Harrison on that card and Dominique Brazil and Caleb Plant in their own separate fight. And actually I was doing some research. He was actually in Vegas when I was there too. But the guy that Brazil is fighting, he looked yeah, he actually looked pretty solid. I don't know much about him, but he looked pretty solid when I was doing my little homework. So you're getting stacked cards, three to four, five fights on a card. This Alabama card is, is pretty lit. Tony Harrison, Jared Swift Hurd should be a good fight. We could really, this would be the best name on Jared Swift Hurd's resume, clearly. Better than like the Oscar Molinas and he just fought um, Jojo Dan who moved up and Kell Brook had already stopped him off of a, a leg stabbing injury. So this is this is why HBO is, is kind of suffering because they can't compete with the with the the cards like the loaded loaded cards they don't i don't know if it's a stable or or what but i mean look at their schedule one two three four fights on their calendar so far and one two three of the four are all pay-per-view so the only one we're not getting is a middleweight match between lemieux and stevens which again is solid, but it is not the most meaningful fight for the division. Plus, I, I seen some of the people that are going to be on the card. None of the fights were like the most meaningful fights in the division, right? And you got Showtime and PBC. They're stacking their cards pretty well. Like you look at again, Broner versus Granado should be a fun fight, scrappy fight. Um, David Avenesian just beat Shane Mosley. Lamont Peterson, veteran who's fought against Amir Khan, Lucas Matisse. Danny Garcia, Kendall Holt, Dieri Jean when he was undefeated. Peterson has been in there with Victor Ortiz. He's been in there with Tim Bradley. I mean, this is, this is he's a he's a name. Felix Diaz, an Olympic gold medalist, and he beat him despite there was some controversy. People thought Diaz won. So it's getting real hard. Like 50 said, you gotta do something, baby. <laughs> HBO, I know you listening. You gotta do something. Stop all these pay-per-views, man. <laughs> Something special. You guys can get some more fights in the calendar, man. So, yeah, it's like PBC and Showtime are, are doing the 50 cent job rule. It's hard to compete. Especially, this is really impressive. Danny Garcia versus Keith Thurman. Two undefeated guys. Two guys with championship belts. Two legit guys with, um, at this point, good names on the resume. You can say Keith Thurman beat Robert Guerrero. Diego Chavez. That was a good fight when Chavez was a interim champion undefeated and then obviously most recently sean porter and then we don't even have to go over danny garcia's resume been in there with zab judah eric morales twice spun him around the second fight beat amir khan when amir khan was slated to maybe fight mayweather and move up if he got past danny garcia which he didn't because he got stopped and dropped in rounds three stopped in rounds four been in there with lucas matisse he's been in there with your boy rod salka that was a joke 
Lamont Peterson, Robert Guerrero, right? So it's it's a good fight. Showtime's doing their thing. Showtime now has a higher viewership out of, out of the competing telecast. But again, the real reason that's concerning is Showtime has less subscribers totally than HBO, and HBO has been the landmark for boxing. You know, what I mean that's the known station. But slowly but surely, like I said, like I said before in these videos, I always tell you how I honestly feel and. You got to be able to forecast. You look at the recent videos five months ago, two weeks ago. I'm telling you what it is. Ten months ago, Showtime, they're doing it up. They're doing their thing and they're like, they're stepping up their, their content. And it's just what it is. So I'm, I'm anxious to see if and how HBO responds to this. And responding with three or four of your, your cards on the, on the website, three or four of them on pay-per-view, pay-per-view, pay-per-view pay-per-view that's not necessarily the way to go maybe that ensures that they get their money but it's not really doing a, um, a justice to the fans let me know what you guys think showtime did beat hbo this particular weekend let's see if hbo can rebuttal this next time they have a dueling card like last card i think that they had showtime lost and it and showtime had the better card that was like ruslan provotnikov john molina demetrius andre willie nelson and they had another fight on there that was on the same night, I think, as like Vasil Lomachenko, Rocky Martinez. And that HBO card, just last year, when they had him on at the same time, same night, HBO trumped Showtime, even though Showtime had a triple header. So not necessarily a good sign if you're HBO, because now Showtime had the better card, and it showed because it did more, more views with less subscribers. So you guys do the math. It's, things are trending in the direction of Showtime, like Floyd is saying, like Steven Espinoza said at the at the Ring Star promoted. Um, and that's the other thing, Richard Schaefer being back in the picture, he's a monster. He's signing everyone. Check out the video the interview I did with Money Pal the Fourth. He got a card. Um, the Baldettis brothers, they're fighting on that card. And Richard Schaefer teamed up in the UK with David Hay. So it's just HBO. You got to do something, baby. It's just it's getting crunch time. If you're really going to compete in the sports arena, namely boxing like you have been, you got to step it up, you know what I mean? Like and put on some great fights. There's great fights that like that could be made, but that don't necessarily have to be packed like pay-per-view. You know what I'm saying? Within the people that work with with HBO, but it's just about making them and, and putting up for it or whatever. So I'm, I'm going to see. I'll wait and see how they respond next. But Showtime. PBC definitely killing. Drop it in the comment section. And let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me or do you disagree? Why? Make sure you share the video. Like the video as always. Hey, comment and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.